All right, it's absolutely a wonderful journey working with all of you for this uh, cool semester. I can have the mic. Yeah. Oh yeah, there we go. Um, and let's have a quick course review, right? So uh, we've covered uh, several aspects from inference to screening, and then uh, we have those application-specific optimizations followed by those more advanced future-looking uh, quantum machine learning. And basically, these are the three big components, including efficient inference, screening, and application-specific optimizations. Right? We try to teach you those uh, high-level concepts. So today, in this uh, review session, hopefully give you, give you uh, uh, some big pictures. And then uh, across algorithm and system co-design, across EECS and AI plus B, if, uh, uh, these are the related courses. You can want to continue exploring related area. Those are some wonderful courses uh, you can consider taking in the future. So part one, we talk about efficient inference techniques, including uh, pruning, quantization, neural architecture search, and knowledge distillation. Right? So pruning, basically, we can safely remove lots of the connections in the neural net without hurting the uh, accuracy. And lots of you have uh, made wonderful presentation. You explore different characteristics beyond the efficiency char uh, characteristic, which is uh, very awesome. And we can also prune across different granularities from this uh, fine-grained pruning, where we can prune more, to this coarse-grained pruning, where we can prune less, but easier to accelerate. And NVIDIA is using this 2 to 4 sparsity natively in their GPUs these days. We also talk about this sensitivity analysis, where how to decide how much do we prune for each layer. Right? So this is a semi-automated approach to decide the pruning ratio. And as a result, we can uh, plot this curve with the accuracy and uh, with the model size and accuracy trade-off. Right? With iterative pruning, uh, we can uh, achieve uh, the best trade-off between the accuracy and the, uh, uh, the model size. So after pruning, we talk about quantization. Right? We don't need full precision to represent a neural net, right? but, but rather we can use very few number of bits, like four bits or eight bits, uh, without losing the accuracy. And there are several approaches to do quantization, including k-means based, which is most uh, flexible, and the linear quantization, widely used uh, in our mobile phones these days, and even ternary or binary quantization, right? So k-means quantization basically is doing, uh, is doing a k-means cluster to find those centroids. And when we are doing the update, we group them by their uh, group and then multiply by the learning rate subtracted from the original centroid. So we can do quantization where fine tuning. For linear quantization, we introduced um, these zero point and also the scale, right? So minus the zero point uh, times the scale. And notice this scale is very important during uh, on device tuning. We are using this scale to do quantization aware scaling to enable training on a real quantized graph. Even more aggressively, we can make both the weight and activation to be binary or, uh, or, binary or ternary, right? So the uh, multiplication add becomes a top count, which is very easy to implement by hardware. Okay, to summarize, uh, these are the efficient um, inference techniques. We also talk about the uh, neural architecture search. So rather than manually design those neural nets, which is very cumbersome to tune the different dimensions, layers, channels, kernels, right? We design, define a search space and define a search strategy, maybe reinforcement learning, maybe uh, evolutionary strategy, and then uh, have a performance estimation strategy, like either, either using flops or using those proxy list um, characteristics, like direct measurement, of the energy, of the latency, etc. And finally, we can run, uh, for example, evolutionary search to give a particular latency accuracy budget and find the best sub neural network. In our homework, we uh, work on this once for all network. You can design one model that can contain many sub networks that can fit different hardware constraints, like a bigger sub network for a newer chip powerful chip, and a smaller subnetwork for an older chip. And the benefit is that for once for all network, 
you don't have to train multiple different models, but just one model. And you can have multiple different sub-networks that can be specialized for different hardware platforms. Um, also, we can use that for full battery scenario and also the battery saving mode. And apart from this neural architecture search, we also talk about distillation, right? We have a teacher network, which is usually larger, student network, which is usually smaller. We want to teach the student by mimicking those logics. Okay? Uh, we can not only mimic the logics, but also try to match the intermediate activations or gradients. Okay? We can define different uh, distillation losses. Okay, then we switch gear from inference to talk about training. First, on the cloud with multi-node, multi-GPU distributed training. So remember, there are two parallelisms. Okay? We can split the data. We can also split the model. Okay? Split the data, we call it data parallelism. And if you split the model, layer one, layer two, layer three, that is the model parallelism. Right? Sometimes the model is just so big, we need both data parallelism and model parallelism. And as communication is required during multi-node distributed training, the bandwidth is a big bottleneck, including memory bandwidth and networking bandwidth, since the, the gradients needs to be exchanged among the network. Right? So here, we uh, learn techniques to optimize and reduce the networking bandwidth for um, a large-scale distributed training. For example, we can <coughs> prune those gradients, okay? and also we can quantize those gradients so that we can send less gradient over the networking. Uh, for example, here we learn about deep gradient compression, where uh, only one in a thousand gradient actually needs to be sent it out. Right? So here we need to correct the momentum, okay? uh, do a momentum correction to make sure there is no loss of accuracy. Another big issue apart from bandwidth is the latency. As the latency uh, increases from a few milliseconds to one second, the speed drastically decreases. Right? So we learn about this delayed gradient averaging technique okay, to tolerate the long latency. You don't have to wait until the gradient you receive the gradient, but you can directly move forward even before you receive the gradient and tolerate such stale the gradient. It's like submitting the homework utilizing the late days. Okay? You utilize four late days, and still it can converge. And finally, we learn about this uh, speed up using uh, eight node Raspberry Pi, uh, showing the effectiveness of these methods. So apart from training on the cloud, we also learn about techniques for on-device training, okay? learning on the edge to enable this always-on uh, lifelong learning. Right, enable customization and make it privacy preserving since users' private data, like their speech, their uh, voice, their mails, or their photos, doesn't need to be sent to the cloud. But that is very challenging, right? That preserves privacy, that is enabling customization, but on device training is limited by the memory where we have to store those intermediate activations, right? So we learned some techniques like tiny transfer learning, tiny TL to fine tune those bias only, okay? where fine tuning the bias doesn't require storing any intermediate activations. And apart from that, we also uh, learn techniques to translate the algorithm improvement to actual uh, saving with algorithm and system code design. Okay? For example, using um, the uh, tiny training engine, which we recently open sourced on GitHub, uh, you can use um, uh, Quantization-aware scaling, and also sparse layer, sparse tensor update to only update a subset of the model. Okay. So we cannot directly scale a model designed for mobile uh, mobile inference to mobile training, right? Since they are fundamentally different. Therefore, we need to de de design those new techniques such as quantization-aware scaling and sparse layer, sparse tensor update. And in our experiment, we discussed. Uh, a small and dense model is less good as a large and sparse model. And finally, uh, we discuss these opti application <coughs> specific optimizations that are um, computationally uh, intensive, including 
point cloud widely used in autonomous driving, right? So we take advantage of those uh, spatial sparsity, spatial redundancy to optimize and accelerate that. And for videos, um, which has this temporal dimension and adjacent frames are very similar, so we want to uh, take advantage of those uh, temporal redundancy. We use a temporal shift module to use shift rather than convolution to accelerate video understanding. For these GAN models, generative models, we, we can take advantage of the spatial redundancy. If you just make a small change, you don't have to draw, redraw the whole image. And for natural language processing, where human language is inherently very uh, redundant, we can take advantage of those token redundancy, remove the words from the sentence, and you can still understand the meaning of the sentence. And finally, we'll give some futuristic um, uh, talk about some more research stuff about quantum machine learning, introducing the basics of quantum circuit, how is quantum machine learning executed, and how to um, overcome the noise um, to make, it ro make quantum ML noise robust. And we get, uh, had a horror labs okay, about pruning, quantization, neural architect research, and finally we deployed the model on microcontrollers. And hopefully, this code base can help you for your future research, even not for the efficiency purpose, but try to explore the other aspects um, of efficient uh, and compressed model. Many thanks to our industry partners, for example, ST Micro, who is donating us those um, um, uh, microcontroller board. Don't forget to return them so we can reuse that for next year's lecture. Um, thanks to Qualcomm, who is going to give us a guest lecture in a moment, and OmniML giving us a guest lecture, and also I'll offer the early access to Omnimizer, which have uh, shown very effective. And if you need to have a longer license, feel free to contact us. Uh, thanks to Google uh, providing us the computational resource. And finally, um, uh, thank you so much for uh, working with me for this whole semester on this new course. This is the first time this course is being offered, and I really hope our five years, six years of research can be condensed into a whole one semester of lecture. So it might be running pretty fast, a lot of pouring, a lot of knowledge into our brain within a short semester. Um, but I pre really appreciate your positive feedback during the reviews and all the participations, all the amazing project report that I find super, uh, super uh, exciting.